Evening. Hey, welcome to Button Our Fellowship. Uh, thank God for all of you. Uh, thank God for those of you <clears throat> here watching, uh, here with us tonight, and also for those watching online. Thank God for all of you. Uh, we'll go ahead and dive right in. Uh, a lot to talk about uh, in this book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 uh, as we continue to move down here talking about spiritual gifts uh, and dealing with these issues uh, pertaining to spiritual gifts, okay? Now, uh, as we said before, uh, uh, I want to just start off by saying spiritual gifts are not talents, okay, or, or, or things, or, or practice skills, okay? Uh, spiritual gifts were things that God administered for the purpose and function, all right, of building up the body of Christ, okay, uh, particularly in 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, all right? And so we're going to go through some things as we continue to go through. Uh, first of all, we need to understand how to rightly divide the word of truth, okay? Uh, understanding that God had a plan and purpose for the nation of Israel found in, the, in the, every book outside of Paul's epistles, Roman through Philemon. Uh, once you get the Paul's epistles, God had a plan and purpose for the heavenly kingdom and the heavenly places, all right? And he, and he uh, calls that particular body or members of that body the body of Christ, okay? And so as members of the body of Christ, we don't go back to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to get our doctrine, okay? Uh, we go through Romans through Philemon to get our doctrine for this dispensation of grace, all right? It's not, one, it's not enough to be scriptural. You have to be uh, dispensational, okay? Because just being scriptural, knowing what the scriptures say, but not knowing where to put them and in the context won't benefit you. You won't get the spiritual benefit that God desires for you to have, all right? Now, so uh, having said that, as we continue to go through this book of 1 Corinthians, all right, we're going to keep everything in its proper context. And as Paul is coming down, he's basically reproving the Corinthians of some behaviors that they had by giving them more understanding of the doctrine, not by beating them across the head about their behavior, uh, but giving them more doctrine because the doctrine is what transforms and changes the mind, okay? And so as we see that, as we come down, all right, when we're dealing with people and uh, trying to correct people or reprove them of certain things, all right, the first thing we have to do is understand that we were at once at this place of, of no understanding and going about establishing our own righteousness, having a zeal, but just not according to knowledge, okay? And so what Paul is doing with these Corinthians is he's giving them some instructions on these spiritual grips because he said in verse 1, I would not have you ignorant. Okay, so he wants them to gain some understanding. Unfortunately, in the church today, there are a lot of people who are ignorant as it pertains to spiritual gifts. Okay, and so that's what we're going to be dealing with. All right, now we left off in verse what four? Uh, I think three. Yeah, right around here. Okay, we were going down talking about the dumb idols. Okay, yeah. uh, uh, and so we'll we'll get started. Let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you now for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love, your kindness, and understanding. We just thank you for who you are. Uh, Father God, we uh, <clears throat> thank you for this day. We thank you for this hour. Uh, we thank you for the completion of your word that we may study it out. Uh, Father God, we uh, ask now for understanding. Uh, we pray now for spiritual enlightenment uh, that we may know you by, by way of knowing your word. Uh, for it is through your word, Father God, that our faith is increased. Uh, for, uh, uh, for faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And is it impossible to please you without faith? And so we thank you for thank you, the Jesus. word in which, by which we, whereby which we can know you. And we thank you for that now. Uh, Father God, we pray now for uh, uh, spiritual guidance, Father God, and understanding, Father God, that studying to show ourselves approved is what we ought to be doing. Uh, so many times we get into a position to where we want to know you, uh, but we don't want to study. Uh, so we pray now for the desire to study your word uh, each and every day, Father God, as we uh, continue to grow, grow closer to you as, as much as you tarry. Uh, we we uh, thank you now. We pray for those who are lost in denominational religious systems. Uh, we pray now that the scale may fall from their eyes. Help us to be gentle, uh, patient, apt to teach, uh, considering ourselves. And Father God, help uh, help those who are lost to recover themselves from the snare of the devil. Yes. Uh, we pray now, Father God, <clears throat> we ask that you give us a desire to put on the whole arm of God so that whereby we may be able to stand. That's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, so 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, all right, all right, look at verse number 1. Paul says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brother, I would not have you up. Mm -hmm. So there were some things that 
they were ignorant about. And Paul is saying, I would not have you what? Ignorant. ignorant. Now, Paul makes this statement six times in his, in his epistles, all right, and it behooves us to take notice when he says this, all right, because he's starting now a new chapter or a new topic of conversation with these Corinthians, okay? We went all the way through the first 11 chapters, and he was dealing with certain issues in each chapter. Now he's about to deal with spiritual gifts, and the first thing he starts out by saying is, I don't want you ignorant concerning these things. So evidently, there were some things that the Corinthians were doing as it pertains to spiritual gifts that they were not doing correctly. All right. So when people run to 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14 to gain some type of understanding all right, to perform these spiritual gifts, they're already starting it off wrong. Okay, Because chapters 12, 13, and 14 all go together. All right, And so what we see here is, is Paul initially starting off by saying he does not want them ignorant. All right? So now, every verse after this, Paul is going to give some insight to where they may be what? Ignorant. All right? Look at verse 2. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 2. Ye know that ye were what? Gentiles. Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. All right? These Corinthians were worshiping these idols that had eyes, mouths, but could not see or could not speak. All right? Just as some people do today. All right? Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse. If you're preaching another gospel than which Paul is preaching for this dispensation, Paul says, let him be what? A curse. Galatians 1, verse 8 and 9. As a matter of fact, he says it twice. Okay? If in verses 8 and 9. Okay? All right? And that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the what? Holy but by the Holy Ghost. When you talk to people about spiritual gifts, okay, all right, and they don't have an understanding, all right, they say, well, I know what God spoke and said to me. The Spirit of God does not speak that way, okay? The Spirit of God is, and most people always say, well, so you mean to tell me that there's no more healing and, and, and there's no more spiritual gifts? You're putting God in a box, all right? Now, when Paul says, I... I would not have you ignorant, okay? To make that statement, that's an ignorant statement for people to make because God puts himself in a box whereby with we can obtain him because otherwise we would not be able to obtain him because he's not constricted by time, mass, or anything that we're constricted by, all right? So God puts himself in a box, all right, which is his word in order, all right, to be, to, uh, in order for us to reach him because otherwise we would have no way to reach him. Right? Because he's, 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 he's a spirit, okay, and he's above our humanly being. So the only way that we can have even a concept of God is through the word. So God will never deviate from his word. So he's not going to speak something to you that goes against his word. All right? And this is, the, this is important because, because people are so ignorant of God's word, per, it, uh, 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 specifically pertaining to spiritual gifts, you have a lot of confusion in the church. All right, you have a lot of things going on that people are calling gifts that are just talents. You got a lot of things going on that people are trying to do as far as a spiritual gift to make themselves seem so spiritual, but yet they're far from God because they don't know the word. Okay, so this is important. All right, nobody can say Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Right, the only way you can receive the Holy Ghost is by believing the right gospel. So if you're, if you're going to a church or if you're under the understanding that you can lose your salvation after having received it because you do something wrong or bad, then you're not, really, you're not actually saved. You have not believed and trusted in the gospel of the grace of God and the gospel of Christ in which he died to pay for your sins. He shed his blood. He was buried and rose again the third day for your eternal justification. Eternal means how long? Forever. So that means if I'm under a belief to where I can lose, I believe I can lose my salvation, I have not fully trusted the gospel. And if I have not fully trusted the gospel, because the one of the benefits of believing that gospel is receiving what? Salvation, but what? The Holy Ghost. So if so there's no way that you can believe, all right, in the death, burial, and resurrection and think you can lose your salvation. Right? Because those people who don't have the Holy Ghost because they don't believe the gospel, okay, that means that these things, especially concerning spiritual gifts, they cannot even know them. All right? Yeah, because I want to get a little clarification here. 
we talk about no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Is that in our dispensation only? Because I did, did the Jews before the cross, mm -hmm. in order to be saved or get salvation, they had to repent and say what? That he was what? Right, but they were not saved. They were not saved. Say, yeah, yeah. They not saved. Now remember now, the Holy Ghost was not in operation That's at the I'm time of Christ's sure. death because he was there. Yeah. So they didn't have to believe in the Holy Ghost in order to do those things. All right? That's why he said, I will send a comforter unto you. John 14, 26, John 15, 26. That's why, because if he was there, because the Holy Ghost is God, Jesus is God. So if he's there, there's no need for the function or workings of the Holy Ghost. Because Christ is no longer here, now the Holy Ghost is here in order to instruct us the ways of God, uh, to the ways of God. But that's a dispensational change. change. Absolutely. That's what I want to make right, sure right. because the Jews at the time, they didn't know. And it's, right, they knew and understood the Godhead, but, they, but, the, but the Holy Ghost was not, his particular <laughs> purpose or function was not yet in operation for them. Yeah, but see, we get points like in the uh, upper room when it lit on them, the flames of what, what, the light as of. Yeah, so that was just the Spirit of God spirit, descending upon them, not, not the indwelling Holy Ghost. Okay, that's right. the difference. Right. There's a difference, right. Uh, because again, the Spirit would come upon them even in the Old Testament to do the will of God. That was the presence of God, but it did not indwell them. That's why King Saul had the anointing, had the Spirit of God, okay, all right, but he still went out and did wrong and did his own thing and he was killed because of it. All right. So understand that he did not have an indwelling Holy Ghost, which is one of the reasons and one of the benefits that we receive in this dispensation as members of the body, which is what, which is why we receive eternal salvation despite what we may do in the flesh. All right, because our spirit man is made complete in Christ. When the spirit came down on it, it was only for a time frame. Right, right. absolutely. Okay. It was only for a time period. It did right. not indwell him. All right, as the, as the Holy Ghost does with us today. Right. Yeah. All right. Look at this. Look at uh, First Corinthians twelve. Look at verse number four. All right. Now, okay. So he talked about the first three scriptures, but he's now he said now there are what the of, of gifts, but the same what spirit, and there are differences of administrations, but the same what Lord. and there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh what. All in all. all in all. Okay, so now, when we look at this, what do we see here in verses 4, 5, and 6, based on what we were just talking about? There's, it's just various yes. gifts and operations, but everything is by the Lord. Uh-huh. Gifts and operations. Okay, but what stands out? It's all by the Lord. And, and those four, and those three verses. Diversities. Uh-huh. Same. What's that? Same. 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 Okay. The key word in these three verses is what? Same. All right. We're all members of one body. Same spirit, but we're all what? Different. You see that? We're all different. Watch this. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same what? Spirit. Spirit. Okay. You got the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God what? The Holy Ghost. All right, so there are diversities of gifts, but the same what? Spirit. Same Holy Ghost, same Spirit. There are differences of administrations, but the same what? Lord. Same Lord. Jesus is the same today, forever, uh, and yesterday, today, and what? Forever. Amen. Verse 6, and there are diversities of operations, but it's the same what? God. God, which worketh all in all. So you have the, you have the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God. You have Jesus himself and you have God. Three and one. Uh-huh. Define administration as using it. Yeah, we are. So so we we we're gonna get to that. But we got three, we got three and one here, okay? So you got the spirit, you got God the Father, you got God the Son. Okay? And they're all working as what? The same unit. Yeah. Alright? Same unit. Alright, so just as Christ and the Godhead is one, so we as members of his body ought to be what? One. That's why Paul, earlier in the book of Corinthians, in first chapter 1, verse 10, he says we should all be speaking the what? Same, Same thing. thing. Right? 
communion, common union, okay? All right, and again, we define the common union not as drinking the, uh, the grape juice and eating crackers, but the common union is what we have in Christ. That what's, that's what make, forms a communion or common union, okay? All right, that's what we have, all right? Now, watch this. You may be different than me when it comes to certain things, all right? Now, I'm not a person that's just going to go out and start any conversation necessarily about the Bible. All right, but I will finish them, all right? <laughs> uh, but I'm just not going to go out and start anything, right? Some people may have, be a little more evangelistic in that sense to where they'll just go talk to anybody about the Bible. I got to kind of pick the right spots. That's just me. Now, when it comes up here, I'm, I'm at home up here, okay? You may not be as comfortable up here, all right? So we're all different. We all have diversities, but we're still all should be speaking to what? Same thing. Because we should all have the same what? Spirit. I heard a pastor say one time, well, God gave you that interpretation, but he gave this person a different interpretation. Why would the same God give two different interpretations about the same thing? That's not what? That's not order. That's confusion. Mm -hmm. And we went to 1 Corinthians 14. God is not the author of what? Confusion. Mm -hmm. So when you see in church that people talking about, well, God gave you an interpretation. No, no. God is going to give the same interpretation. Why? Because it's the same spirit, the same God. Mm -hmm. And he wants all of us to be speaking the what? Same, same thing. thing. So why would he give you something different than he gives me? Well, that, that's only because that will cause a, a division. And saying that, listen, it's no need to argue because, you know, for instance, you come at somebody with grace, but they're trying to come back at you and they don't have any substance to what they're saying. Right. But gospel to everybody differently. Right. So, you right. know, right. that's just to say, look, you right. know, let's keep the conversation. Right, right. And, 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 and it's to keep the peace, but are we trying to please man or are we trying to please God? Amen. You see that? All right. Now, there, uh, there, uh, uh, sometimes it's not worth the fight, quote unquote. All right, we're dealing with certain people because the number one thing is they probably aren't even what? Saved. Because in order for us to speak the same thing or to have a common union, we got to be a part of the same what? Same body, same spirit. So if they're not saved, then of course they're not going to understand what you're saying. Yeah, they get a, a different interpretation, but it ain't from the same God you serve. Okay, it's the God of this world. All right? So watch this. Look at verse 4. There are diversities of what? Yes. What is diversities? Differences. Differences. Huh? Different differences. differences. Mm -hmm. So everybody has different gifts. And again now, these are spiritual gifts for the purpose of edifying and building up the body. Mm -hmm. Not to get, give you a gift of speaking in tongues or something so you could be more special than somebody else. You notice that the preachers speak in tongues more than anybody else? God only gave them that gift. Right? Watch this now. Look at verse 5. But notice the same what? Spirit. Look at verse 5. And there are differences of what? But the same what? Lord. All right, this is what you were asking about. What is this verse talking about? What is administration? Ministry. In a fundamental sense. Ministry. I mean, if you look at it, I was thinking Lord. of a school, for example. So the admin are the people that's up top. From mm -hmm. perspective, so you have like the principal, then you get the APs, which is the assistant principal, then you will have the principal secretary. Mm -hmm. Right. So when I see the word administration in the Bible, I automatically think about the Godhead. Right. Okay. Which, okay. Because it said administration. Uh huh. So and then, well, I'm, I don't have a clear thought of it, but when I'm seeing Christ as being the body, and then Him as like you know as the right hand of the Father. Right. And, and, and like, it's like the superintendent. Then you got the principal. Then you know to get to the principal, you gotta go to the principal secretary. Right. Right. So I'm, I ain't got it all together yet up here, but I'm, I'm that's how I'm visualizing. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. See. All right. All right. I mean, that's differences. Like you say, differences of administration. Uh -huh. I'm thinking maybe that's the leadership of the church. It, different churches have different administration. Your pastor is here. There's another pastor over there. You should be preaching the same thing, but uh -huh. those are the only differences as far as the administration. You got pastors, deacons, and elders. Those are the same thing, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Should be in everything. Okay. All right. Dealing with that, does the body of Christ have different hierarchies? Because that's what you're basically saying. But they are differences in gifts. 
your gift is being the pastor, right? You have deacons. What is that? As opposed, all right. To so now we're going to get to what these gifts are. Ministry, yeah. All right, so and what, what right? Because, because to be a bishop, which would technically be what I am, is not a gift. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, because it says he that Desire. desires Desire. this Desire. office of a Desire. desire the good thing. So it's not like. I'm chosen for this position. There's a desire there. You see that? Well, I look, at the, I look uh, at the administration as the different ministries, the different um, forms, of body, the different bodies in the, I mean, members in the body that perform different Functions. Functions. So that's what you said. That's what you think the administration is. That's what I think ministries. Yeah. Wouldn't that be like? Hold, hold up, come up, come right here. I'm just thinking the different duties, different actions. Okay. Ministers. By who? By members of the body. Okay. I thought it was talking about like, a, like we were talking about a few weeks ago about like the order, like administration, like as far as like you were saying, uh, administrators is just for the fulfilling of structure and order of how things are supposed to roll out, and then the operations is talking about actual like. You know, fundamentally, what how the bodies operate, but I think it has to be an order. Okay. Set by the there is an order. Here comes the truth. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, you uh, said that there was an order set. Okay. Even Paul was set in order when he said that women shouldn't do certain all right, things. That's not thinking about administration. Okay. So now, all right. So now, the fundamental definition of administration is just simply. And we'll get to this verse in verse five. It's just a person, persons, or a committee, all right, all right that, that basically sets up a structure or organization, establishes something for the purpose of administering something. All right? We heard this before. All right, so now. Like ministries. Huh? Back to where we started. So who sets up ministries? Who sets them up? Yeah, because what you guys are saying is that the administrations has to do with the members of the body. That's not correct. What do you mean by yeah, we'll setting the up the churches, though? Saying Who the made church. up the different bodies and different functions God. for the purpose of administering something? God. 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 Right. Yeah. So that, watch this. Verse 5. And there are differences of administrations. Mm -hmm. But the same what? Lord. The same Jesus could be the high priest over here, mm -hmm. but be the head of the body here. Mm -hmm. Right? Same Lord, different in men of what? Because what he administered here was the gospel of the kingdom. What he administered here was the gospel of the grace of God. Mm -hmm. See that? So the operations have to do with the different functions of the body. Okay? The administration has to be formed at the top. Because the body, we're not administering anything new. So we put our answer together, we look pretty good. So, so yeah. no other post and there's no other foundation that are laid. There can be laid, which is Jesus Christ. First right. Corinthians 3.10. Right. And I right. also said that they who don't listen to my gospel, and using that word, isn't that different? Isn't that being administrated? But that was who, who established Paul's gospel? Christ, Christ established so, so, so Paul did not Christ. establish anything. He was operation. He was an operation. Which mm -hmm. makes him administrator if he operates. No, no, no. no. Uh, watch this. This is now, and, and, we, and, we, and, and this is good because this is the problem that we run into. Because most people think we elevate Paul above Christ to say what you said would be doing now. Oh. You see that? So now, Paul, all right was just a chosen vessel, according to Acts 9 and 15, to, to administer this. But the administration had already come up with it. Okay. So let's take the instance of a teacher. The administrators come up with what curriculum the teachers will teach. But who administers the, the, the curriculum? It's not the principal, it's the teachers. But the teachers didn't come up with anything, they just they're just yeah, teaching yeah, yeah. what was all carrying out what was already there. Yeah. So when it talks about verse five, there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord is saying that Jesus could be the high priest here and also the head of the body here and be the same what? No, no. Same Lord. Yeah. Right? So the administrations has to do with setting up something for a purpose 
to administer something. So the, so the body of Christ was set up for the purpose of what? What's the question? Having the kingdom. Huh? Serving the kingdom. Administration. Huh? Administer grace for the heavenly kingdom. With grace. So I, you know, this is kind of. I, I didn't mean for this to be a trick right, yeah, question, but this is almost a trick, trick question. Yeah, but 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 the purpose, the sole purpose of the body of Christ, all right, is to carry out God's plan in the heavenly kingdom. Heavenly all, right. Kingdom. all right, because God has two. There, God has two realms of His kingdom. The kingdom of God is made up of with two spheres, mm -hmm. heaven and earth. God created the agency of the nation of Israel. All right, to administer the purpose of reconciling the earth to himself. He created the body of Christ, as Ephesians says, before the foundation of the world, Ephesians 1, 4, with the purpose of administering or carrying out, all right, uh, uh, the purpose of reconciling the heavens back to himself. Joel 15 and 15 tells us that even the heavens were not what? Clean in his sight. So the purpose and the administration that God set up was for us to reconcile the heavenly places, the nation of Israel, to reconcile the earth. Okay? All right? So now, this, but the same Jesus, the same Lord, the same God, has differences of what? Administrations. You see that? Differences of administrations. If you got a school that's K through 12, the curriculum is different for each grade. But it's the same what? Administration. All right? We clear on that? Yeah. All right? Look at this. Look at verse 6. And there are diversities of what? Operations. But it is the same God which worketh what? All in all. Now, so the operations have to do with what? The, the people carrying out the purpose of the administrator. But guess what? You're not left alone to do that because who is actually performing and doing the work in you? God, God himself. Himself. Through the Spirit. Through the Spirit. Right. Which what? would be the God. curriculum, the doctrine. Right. That Absolutely. carry out from the administration. There you go. There you go. Amen. Perfect. Right? Amen. Because it's the doctrine. As a matter of fact, go to Romans chapter number. Uh, <laughs> Before you get that, go to, go to Philippians 2 and then get Romans 12. We'll go to Philippians 2 first. Philippians 2. Because the administration had to have a purpose for setting something up. All right? Look at Philippians 2 and look at verse 12. I'm, look at verse 13. Thank you. Philippians 2, verse 13. Four. For it is who? God. Which worketh what? In you. Both to, do, to will and to do of your good pleasure. His, his good pleasure. pleasure. Of his good pleasure. So the administration, right, only needs you to carry out his plan and purpose, not your own. Amen. All right? So when people are talking about, well, God wants you to be rich, I'm going to pray for this better job, I'm going to pray for this this and that, that is not his will, that's your will. Mm -hmm. And you're not following the administration's will, you're trying to do your own thing. Right now, you have a Paul has a Paul has a word for this in Romans ten and two. You have a zeal of God, but it's not according to what. Knowledge. Verse three goes on to say, "You have gone about to establish your own what righteousness. righteousness, and have not submitted to the righteousness of God." Right. So when you're trying to do things according to your will, as opposed to allowing the administrator to work his will in you, that's where you have the problem. That's where the Corinthians were going wrong, and that's where they were ignorant of these spiritual gifts. Because the spiritual gifts was not to benefit you. It was to benefit the body. So if you're speaking in tongues today, and nobody don't understand what you're saying, that ain't for you, that because it's not edifying anybody. You're not doing the will of the Father. You're outside of the curriculum. You're doing your own thing. I know you're zealous. You want the spiritual gifts just as the Corinthians did. All right? Paul is even going to say, listen, I would hope that you do covet these things, but there's a more excellent way. Amen. Go back to 1 Corinthians 12. Uh, you keep and I don't know. If that's like almost like the end of the year evaluation, like 1 Corinthians 3, 
Like when we go to uh -huh. the judge, absolutely. So when I sit with the principal, you know, <laughs> he's going down those different domains and say, hey, you know, according to the curriculum, right. this is what you did, mm -hmm. you know. So it, it, when you, the more you teach, the more like it's giving me that visual, like, right, that's a whole school. Absolutely, atmosphere. absolutely. You get your rumors first, right? Yeah. Yes, but, but I'm gonna go back because I read that. I want to read verse twelve, chapter twelve of First Corinthians, verse six again. And then we're going to go to Romans 12. Chapter 12. First Corinthians chapter 12. Go back to where we were. Verse 6. Okay. So we saw Philippians 2.13 says, For it is God which worketh in you both to, to will, and to, both to do his will and his what? Good pleasure. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 6 here of 1 Corinthians 12. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh, E-T-H, all in what? In all. Oh. Continually working in you. Amen. It's, it's, it's his purpose. Mm. Look at verse 13, 1 Corinthians 12. For as the body is one and had many members, I'm sorry, verse 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into what? One body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be born or free, and have been, have been all made to drink into what? One spirit. The only way we are uh, able to be made to drink in one spirit is that we're all following the same curriculum or the same doctrine. Mm -hmm. And we're speaking the same thing. And the same spirit is telling us the same thing. Mm -hmm. Because again, the spirit of God is not going to tell you that tithing is in because that was under this administration and this operation to somebody in the, in the dispensation of grace. It just don't work like that. Right? That's why we have to rightly divide the word of truth. Go to Romans chapter 12. Yeah. Um, and just reading that first, so it, it kind of throws you off when you think about baptism being submerged in water because the way it's said about. We're baptized what, into one body. Right. So it's just, That's not something physical. Right. That's mm -hmm. spiritual. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Look at. Uh -uh. Go to Romans chapter 12. This is still has to be progressive revelation because Paul doesn't talk about this anywhere but here and we know that once we got the word all these gifts watch this and we'll get to this in first corinthians 13 a lot of these spiritual gifts once the body of christ is built up there's no need for them first corinthians 13 it says they're going to cease actually because once we have when paul wrote first corinthians it was you got galatians first and second thessalonians and then first and second corinthians and the order in which he wrote them Acts what? so uh -huh. Acts what? What was it in Acts? Acts What's, 7 or Acts when he was writing these? Well, it depends. Galatians was right around Acts 15. First and second Corinthians was right around Acts 19, Acts 20. Okay, so right? Right, so, so when Paul wrote these, he still was receiving further revelation. In 2 Corinthians 12, he said, I'm going to come to many revelations of the Lord, okay? So he's going to come to more and more revelation. But, what he, but in the infancy of the body of Christ, which is right around the time of 1 Corinthians, God was giving out these spiritual gifts for a purpose. Once the body of Christ had been built up and had been edified, there's no need for the gifts because now we have the completion of the what? Of the mystery. We have the completion of the word. So there's no need to use the inferior means of communication, which was the gift, which were those were uh, uh, things that were elementary. Right. right? Because at the time, you needed those things. Now that we have the completion of God's word where we can study it out, we don't need them. Right? God does not need to operate by them because now he's operating by his word. <laughs> Which is the excellent way, bro. Which is the more excellent way. Now Paul was saying, so Paul like, look, what y'all looking for, like y'all got something better. Better. Then we got something that's already established. Already established. And that's, and that's, that's the key. Hey, yeah, that's, yeah, that's the key. Asthma, you did, you know, <laughs> right. yeah, that's the key. I said, don't no need to do all that. I got you, brother. Get it right to him. And that's the, and that's the key hey, because hey, guess what? If I speak in tongues, that's great. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> However, there's a more excellent way to communicate God's word. Because mm -hmm. Paul says, I'd rather speak five words right, in a known tongue than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Right. Because the whole point of the tongue was for a purpose. So if you're not being edified when somebody speaks in tongues, which you won't be today, because that's no longer an operation. 
of the body, okay? So you won't be edified. So again, what is the point? Just for somebody to stand up here and seem like he's so spiritual. And God is not concerned about that. And you notice that they only speak in tongues when they get happy. They're only healing people when the spirit is in the atmosphere. All of this stuff that God didn't need any of that for, for his gifts and operations to be done. He didn't need no cry. He didn't need any of that. Mm, right? Sad to say that it's still bringing attention to themselves. It's still bringing attention to the person. I just right? wonder about that spirit being in the atmosphere. I didn't. Yeah, but, well, you know, people say that. And, and, and again, my answer to that is always we got to do, we got to, uh, we got to uh, uh, get the, uh, 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 the music going to usher in the spirit of God. We got to set the atmosphere. But well, yeah, if Christ is in me, that means he came in the door when I came. So what I need to usher him in for? If I have the spirit of Christ in me, that means he's here when I walk in the door. And if you have the same spirit because you believe the same gospel, then he was here when you came in the door. So if all of us say, like we claim we are, why do we need to usher in the Spirit? He's already here. So they're bringing in something else. They, yeah, they're bringing in something else. They're ushering in something else. Right? That spirit of, of, God, of prosperity to get you to open up your wallet. That's what they're bringing in. Right? Pastor, I was just thinking about you saying that uh, gifts were for a purpose. Right. But they, they were to see. They did cease. Right. And if we just I was thinking about the will of God. If we could ever keep the will of God before us, uh -huh. then we can forever stay on track. track. Because his will is that all men be saved and, and come, to the come knowledge into of the knowledge of right. truth. So those things were just things put in place. And and we and I'm sorry. Mm -hmm, go on. And we can meet that will by keeping the main thing the main, main thing. thing. And the spiritual <laughs> gifts weren't the main thing. Amen. That was just a means by which the will could be established. Amen. That wasn't the main thing. Amen. But just as these Corinthians were ignorant of this thing, yes. so, so are we. people today. Yes. So are we. They're coveting the spiritual gifts without wanting the main purpose of them, mm. which is edification. Right. Mm. That's the main goal. Yes. I'm almost like my guy who wanted to profit off of the spiritual yeah. Oh, we gonna get to that. You we gonna get to about, that. You Simon, I'm about tired, but I'm thinking about like Sunday best man. They, they send us it's a prize you get. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, like, you glorify, conforming like, to the world. Yeah, boy. conforming to the world. There's no real edification there. And again, because most people like to think that oh, it, you know, is it sinful? No, it ain't sinful. But is it righteous? Is it edifying? It's not about is it sinful or not. Is it righteous? It's not even Does it edify? Does it minister grace unto the hearer? That's the whole purpose. Singing is not one of them gifts that's even mentioned. It's not even a spiritual gift. That's a talent. Yeah. So, okay? That's, that's a talent. That ain't no spiritual gift. And they say, oh, watch this. Oh, they about to sing under the, they about to sing under the anointing. Mm. No, they about to sing with the natural gift and ability and the coach that taught them. That's what they about to do. Right? I see the the, the Corinthians the com as carnal as they were, so much like today. Oh, uh -huh. they wanted to edify themselves, Sales. make themselves mm -hmm. look, look good, right? Just right. like when you hear a person speaking in tongues, you think, "Wow, right, so right, so right. deep, deep, oh, right." Oh, he got the spirit <laughs> in him. Right, right, right. You know, and people start moving, getting quiet, yeah. but they were really edifying it's themselves right, right, right. when it was to edify that they were supposed. Right. They were trying to put themselves up, yeah. not prosper the church. Right, right. And that's that's the whole, that was a, and again, when we talk about these spiritual gifts, understand it, don't forget the purpose. Because if we all should be speaking the same thing, that means if you're speaking with the spiritual gift of tongue, I should be able to what? Understand. So if I can't understand, because I don't know what you're saying, and there's no interpretation of what you're saying, Remember now, we're not talking about translation, but there's no interpretation of what you're saying. Then you need to shut up in the church. Uh, let me say, be quiet in the church. All right, I don't want to say shut up. All right, let me say, be quiet. Let me be. Let me be politically correct. Let me say, you need to be quiet, be silent in the church. Okay, all right, that's a better way to put it. Look at Romans chapter twelve. Romans twelve. 
Man, I gotta speak like that for my for my for my holy rollers. Alright. Look at <laughs> look at Romans 12 and look at verse 4. Alright? Now, look at this. Watch this now. This is the whole thing about this. For as we have many members in one what? Body. And all members have not the same what? Oh. So we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of what? Another. Having then gifts differing according to what? Grace. That is given to us, whether prophecy let us what? Prophesy. According to the proportion of what? Faith. Not according to what you think God is saying, but according to the proportion of what? Faith. Which cometh by Here. and hearing by what? The word of God. There you go. Excuse me, verse 7. On ministry, let us do what? Wait on ministry. Now, when this word wait here, okay, a waiter does what? Wait on you, right? Yes, sir. But when they wait on you, what are they actually doing? Service. Service. Service, okay? So to wait here is not mean, oh, I'm just waiting on the Lord to call me. That's not what this is saying, okay? That's not what this is saying. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministry. I remember I asked my grandfather, how do I know I'm supposed to be preaching? He gave me this verse. And he says, now, when it says wait, that don't mean sit around. That means get in the word and study it. All right? So now, when it says our ministry, let us wait on our ministry, right? Or he that teacheth on what? Teaching. But in order to teach, you can only teach what you what? No. no. So you sit there and wait for the calling of God and all of this that people say. I'm just waiting on that still small voice. You're going to be waiting for a long time. And as a matter of fact, you're going to hear a voice. It just ain't going to be the voice of God. It's going to be the voice of your conscience. And that's why you hear people all this. I think God is calling me to, to work in the youth ministry. I think God is calling me to sit in the pulpit, to work the usher boy. God is calling you to do all this stuff that has nothing to do with his will. So thereby, according to 1 Corinthians 12, we know, as Paul says, nobody can call the Lord Jesus except by the Holy Ghost. So you ain't hearing from God. God ain't told you nothing about no usher board ministry. Mm. Or no youth ministry. God, what is that? Mm. Right? What is that? that? That has nothing to do with nothing. That's something man came up with. Right? The, the youth get the same ministry as the adults. The word of God. That's it. There's no special calling for that. There may be a different way to administer it, all right, or operate within that purpose for the younger folks, but the message is still what? The same. It's still the same. So if you don't know anything about the will of God, about the doctrine, how can God be calling you to a ministry? Which he doesn't call anybody. <laughs> how are we called? According to what? He said that with desire, office, I thought. No, that's bishop, but how are we called? When Paul said, be saved. according to what? The according what? To the spirit. Uh, the gospel. The gospel. Uh, First Timothy 1. We're called according to the gospel. Once you hear the gospel, you're called. Because now you have a what? Ministry because you become an ambassador of Christ. That's, your, that's what I always say. Everybody of the body has the same ministry. We just go about it differently because it's different offices, different functions. I have the desire to become a bishop, therefore I teach. Right? That's what you were speaking about. Therefore, I, everybody don't have this desire now. All right? Every, it, I'm comfortable doing this. Everybody's not comfortable doing this. The reason I'm comfortable is because of the, of the power of God working in me because I'm studying to show myself approved. Right? So we are called, once we hear the word, to be ambassadors in your own ministry, your own office in the city. There you go. But we should all be speaking the... Same thing. So even if, you, if, even if you want to deal with the youth, then deal with the youth. If you want to deal with the usher board, but again, people have these different auxiliaries in the church for, uh, for a way to get people to feel a part of something. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Just like in a game. In a gang out in the street, most times kids get a, get a welcome to these gangs because it makes them feel what? A part of something. You see that? Which makes them feel a part of something. In the church, especially if it's a huge church, I remember uh, pastors used to uh, always say, 
if you go to a big church, get involved in the ministries because because that's how you feel a part of the church. Mm -hmm. No, I feel a part of the church based on the doctrine. Mm -hmm. get lost in the right. Don't get lost in all these people. Get a part of something. Mm -hmm. So they got the youth ministry, the usher board ministry, the, the, the elevator ministry. They got all these different <laughs> ministries so you can get involved, okay? So you can get involved in something, right? So you can get involved. But guess what? You should all be getting involved in the what? Same thing, which is the doctrine. Well, see, when they say that, okay, I know youth who are six or seven years old who some people say they called a minister. Right, and they got they videos of these kids words. yelling and screaming and hooting and hollering. They ain't studied a word. But they're mimicking. Yeah, they mimic. They're mimicking what they hear and what they see, yeah, right, which is what people do. And because they can do it real good, oh, God has an anointing on his life, you know, and, and, and you know, but they carry it on with no doctrine, right? People don't understand the, uh, uh, the doctrine. We were, when we were talking about the anointing the other week, uh, Brother Troy online said God has anointed him to cook chicken, okay? <laughs> okay, so, so, the, so the, next, the next time we have a cookout, we need to get him down here to cook out chicken. All right, but, but again, people will use this anointing and throw it around you know what I mean? You know, so, you know, God has anointed, just like with the kids, God has anointed the kid to be a preacher. No, he didn't. He's just mimicking what he sees. Yes, he is. And I saw one with a little boy, took his jacket off, handed yes. it to the preacher behind him, and had a, a towel wiped his forehead. That's just mimicking what he sees. And they standing up. Right, they standing up, clapping, just like they would. But the crazy part about it, he sounds just as intelligent as the adult. Because he's saying what he's saying. Right. Yeah. And, and when I say intelligent, I'm not using that, okay, uh, in, in, in the true sense of the word, right. okay? Right. So he sounds just right. like the adult, yeah. which they're both saying a, a bunch of absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. But it sounds good. They take it off their jacket. It's all show and entertainment. Jesus. Right? That's not ministry. That's entertainment. Yeah. Look at this, Romans 12 here, verse 8, or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with what? Yeah. With cheerfulness. So when it comes to this, notice it's the key word in verses 4, 5, and 6 is what? 1 uh, uh, Corinthians 12. The key word is what? What did we say? Four, five, six. The same. Yeah. Same. The same. Notice these words talk about being what? The same. Go back up to verse 3 real quick of Romans 12 since we're here. This becomes a problem for people. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of him what? Himself. More highly than he ought to what? And they do the exact opposite. And they do the exact opposite. But to think soberly according as God had dealt to every man the measure of what? Faith. The measure of faith. God has dealt every man that. Man and woman here is what they're speaking about. Mankind, mm -hmm. right? Um, in verse 8, when it says, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. Uh -huh. He means, when he talks about giving, um, is that, even, even, even as a, and maybe think about as a pastor or overseer, uh -huh. when you're speaking, you want to make it simple for the people. Sometimes they use, I see a lot of pastors use like these high, these, these large words, right, they're right. talking over mm -hmm. the people. So I'm thinking when you say giving, Giving a word with simplicity so that's easy for all to understand. Absolutely. Is that what? Yes, absolutely. And because it talks about exhortation before that. Right. Yeah. So when you're giving it, give it with simplicity. Right. You can't exhort somebody if they're all over their head. Okay? Because exhortation means what? To exhort. Huh? To strongly instruct. To strongly instruct, to exhort, okay? To teach. All right? How can you do that if you're not giving it to them with simplicity? That's why a lot of times you hear me pray that I'm able to give the word in a plain and clear way that anybody can understand it. Five words. That's what he said. I'd rather speak five words in the church. Christ died for my sins. That'll save somebody, just speaking those five words. You see that? As opposed to talking about all these other, you know, words and all this stuff that you could use. Now, again, a lot of times when it comes to words, I'm just a stickler of grammar and words. I just study words, all right? I just study them. But again, it makes no sense for me to use them, right? I use them in the proper setting, okay? In church, if I'm teaching ministry, I just got to use God's word. Just keep it simple. That's it. Uh -huh. 
and that and that's the, the function of, of, of the of the Holy of the Holy Ghost is the thing that's on here that seems like you know like to the a natural man he he wouldn't be able to understand right but if we are standing so ourselves approved as the output right. of that channel it should be simple yes. right because if you still speaking in, in a complex sense uh, uh if you speaking in a complex way you really don't know what you're saying you're just thinking you copying the basics right right so when right. you give it to the person they like uh, man we all lost here right right but when right. you can make it simple think right. about how deep the revelation had to be for Paul. right right so just right. think about that you yeah. know what i'm saying so I, I think that's the if they can't do it in a simple way, it right. must be they because they because the purpose itself. of and I and I I had to learn that the purpose of ministry is edification, understanding. Out of all that, get it, get understanding. The purpose that's why I always say if you leave church talking about how great I am, I failed you, yeah. right? Because that's what people do. Oh, woo, Pastor Hawes tore it down. Oh, he know he anointed. He got the word. Mm. What what benefit is that if I ask you five minutes later what I spoke about and you don't know? Mm. So what benefit for me to be so anointed and all this stuff that people say, what benefit does that really have if you still have no understanding of God's word? Oh, There's no benefit in that. Right? But yet, that's what these preachers want to do. They use all these words that complicate things that sound like, I don't know what you're saying, and neither do you. Okay? Mm. All right, go back, go to Ephesians 4. So we talk about different operations, different gifts, different administrations. It's all according to what? The same spirit, same God. Look at Ephesians 4, verse 4. Uh oh, Ephesians 4 and 4. We have it. Amen. All right. There is how many? One, one body. One body and one what? Spirit. Spirit. Even as ye are called and one hope of your what? Oh. You're only called according to the gospel, so that means everybody is called the what? Same, Same way. Right? It ain't no special voice. Oh, I heard him yeah. when I was down on my knees in my prayer closet. No, you, it's the same thing. Okay? Look at verse 5. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you what? Oh. So if it's the same God in all of us, then we should all be speaking to what? Same thing. Uh-oh. Same thing. All right? Verse 7. Uh-huh. But unto every one of you is given grace according to the measure of the what? Gift, Gift of, of Christ. Christ. Gift of Christ. All right? Now, when we talk about the spiritual gifts, and I'm going to come back to this as we get down to it, because I'm going to come back to verses 11 all the way down. All right? God gave certain things for the purpose of edification. Right? According to the gift of who? Christ. Right? Right? Uh, God shall supply all your need according to his what? Riches and glory. Not yours or what you think you ought to get or what you think you deserve because you just praise him more than anybody else. All right? It's according. He shall supply all your what? Needs, not wants, but it's according to his, his riches and glory. Mm -hmm. In who? Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. That's where the gift come from. All right? Go to, go to, uh, uh, yeah, go deep. But it says gifts instead of blessing. Uh, according to the gift of Christ. It's not it's blessing it's now, it's, it's a gift. Plural. It's not plural, that's singular. Mm -hmm. He's given it. Yeah, it's a gift. It's a gift. Singular. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Because Christ is going to give a gift. Now, what is the gift that he's given? Jesus Christ. Christ. His son. Huh? Grace. 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 That's simple as that. All right. Grace. All right. that and it's according to that. Man, we just read that in Romans 12. Okay? According to the grace All given. Right. All right? Yeah. So that's it. All right. Go back to go back to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12. Could we have switched that word gift with grace? 
Go, go. Yes. That's yeah. what I'm trying to. Yeah. We could have, but it, gift is the perfect word. Right, right. Yeah, but according to the grace, it's the same. Right, right. right. Same. Yeah, right. Go to uh, go to First Corinthians <laughs> six and look at verse nineteen first. Go to First Corinthians six, look at verse nineteen. First Corinthians six and nineteen. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, I just got a question, Brother Grant. He says, so the, the, the measure of faith God has dealt keep growing by hearing the word of God. Is that correct? Yes. yes. So the, our faith increases by hearing the word of God, wow. right? Said, the way we study it. Grace. Huh? He said, does faith increase or grace increase? The faith, the measure of faith okay. of God that God gives, does that keeps growing by hearing the word of God? Yeah. Yes, that's so correct. Okay, so people, people can kind of hear and make hear it seem like yeah. it's something that you, well, you just, you, you don't worry about stuff because you were just naturally gifted to, to have that gift of, of faith. You know, I study. Yeah. yeah. That's why I don't and, worry and, about this carnal kind of stuff. Right, because right. Because I study. Because, the, because, again, the more you know. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. The fear a lot of times that people have is because of the what? No, On what? Uh -huh. Uh, no, because they're lack of. Or based on what? People fear things because they just don't what? The unknown. People fear the unknown. Yeah. Right? So if I don't know a lot of things, the Bible tells us what's going on in the society. Yeah. and every, It tells us. So because I know, I don't have to fear it because I what? No, it's not unknown to me. Right? right? I don't have to fear. Most people fear the unknown. I just don't know what I'm. I just don't know what's gonna happen. I don't want to take this position. I just don't know. I don't want to do. That's what people are fearful. Yeah. If you knew, when people apply for jobs, if you knew this job was gonna turn to be your a twenty year career for you, you gonna jump right on that. Yeah. Why? Because you what? No. no. Yeah. So the more you know the word, the more it increases your faith, which is belief in God. Yes, Right? Because faith is just what? Believing God and his word. So the more of the word I know, the more of I see what God has done, can do, and will do, that's the right. more I have what? Faith in him. Amen. See that? And that's why I believe Paul says, about, I will not have you in me. Right. And he keeps saying it over and over. Right. Because we understood the more he gave out, the more they knew they was going to be able to grow right. within that doctrine and grow within the body. Absolutely. But they didn't know nothing that he would help everything. Right, right, right. 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 You know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Go uh, uh, go to uh, 1 Corinthians 6, look at verse 19. Let's look at this. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is where? In you. Which ye have of who? God. And ye are not your what? Oh. Oh. It's God that works, worketh in you. Excuse me, to do of his will and of his good pleasure. Right? But the way you allow him, because God is not going to force himself upon anybody, the way you allow God to work in you is by what? Faith. The work of faith, which is studying the word. That's your work of faith. It's to study to show thyself approved. There are going to be members in the body who vehemently fight against this, though. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. There are people who believe and trust in the shed blood of Christ as payment for their sins. They believe that they were justified because he was buried and rose again for their justification. Right? They're saved. Yeah. However, they have not come into the knowledge of truth. Mm -hmm. They're still stuck under the elementary things of the law back mm -hmm. here. Right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. A lot of times, the biggest, uh, uh, I guess, fight that we have, the fight of faith, is dealing with members of the of the body. Mm -hmm. That's what the, the Corinthians were dealing with. Mm -hmm. That's why Paul in First Corinthians one. Some of you say, "I'm of Paul. I'm of Apollos. I'm of Peter." It's the same Christ. Yeah. No matter who preaches it to you, it's the same one. Christ. The doctrine should be the what? Same. Right. But dysfunctional. Yeah. Dysfunctional. Right. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. First Corinthians twelve. First Corinthians twelve. So now, 
Verse 4. Now there are diversities of what? Gifts, but the what? Same, same spirit. spirit. There are differences of administrations, but the same what? Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it's the same God which worketh what? All so it's, it's ultimately God performing in you or in us. Look at verse 7. What's the first, first word? But. 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 So now after reading verses 4, 5, and 7, there's a verse 7 starts with what? But. But. All right, watch this. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to do what? Profit with all. So if it does not profit with all, it excludes 4, 5, and 6. That's what the but is there for. So if you're speaking in tongues, but it does not profit everybody that hears, then it excludes 4, 5, and 6 for you. Right? Watch this. But the manifestation of the Spirit by way of spiritual gifts is given to every man to do what? Profit. What does that mean? To profit back. What does with all mean? Everybody. 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 Yeah. Right? When people talking about testimony service, right? But that's going to help somebody out of, your, out of your problem. But guess what? If I have not experienced what you're testifying about, does that help me? No. But if I give you the word, will that help you? That can help everybody that hears it. Right? So all of these things that people come up with, and the testimonies are good. Right? When I go speak to the kids, when I talk about football, my testimony of football can what? Benefit them because they're all trying to do the same thing I did. They're playing going to the NFL. So that benefits them. So in that, I can't be... Uh, 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 in my job doing accounting work talking about testimonies of football, right? How is that going to benefit anybody to get this accounting stuff done? It, and actually, when you're taught as a speaker, you're supposed to talk to know your audience. Oh, know your audience. So, yeah. Absolutely. Your audience, you have to know you're talking to, so you want to talk to Absolutely. about football. <laughs> right. So why in the world am I standing up in church talking about how great God has been for me? Mm. And God gave me this. God did that. God gave how does that benefit me? Because I'm sitting in church thinking, well, well, shoot, when is God going to do all that for me? Jesus. And then the first thing they say, don't hate on God blessing somebody else because that's how you miss your blessing. Mm -hmm. Right? See, God just wanted to bless the person next to you to see how you will react. Mm -hmm. To see if you were ready for your... All of it. Now, I can, I can dress that up and make it sound real good and have you jumping out your seat. Mm -hmm. But understand, how does that profit with all? Mm -hmm. Right? What in the world is God testing me for like that to see how I'm going to react? First of all, he know my heart anyway. Oh, really? He know I'm probably going to act a fool. Why would he do that anyway? <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> you he know, he don't test us. Really? Right. He does not test or tempt us. Mm. So why in the world? But people say that to, 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 to normalize God giving them blessings tangibly. God does not operate like that. Mm -mm. Right? He's one administration, he's a different administrations, same functions because it's the same spirit. All right, let's look at this and we'll end with this. Now, let's look at, and we already went to Romans 12 to look at where, what those gifts were. Romans 12, 4 through 6, it talks about what these actual gifts were. Okay, now. 1 Corinthians 12 is going to talk about these gifts. I'm just going to read them here, and then we'll come back Sunday and go over all of these. Look at verse 8. Now, after saying verses 4, 5, and 6, then interjecting the but, right, giving you the intended purpose, which is the problem with all, he comes back with the word what? In four, verse 8. Four, four, now he's going to give you further explanation of something, mm -hmm. okay? For to one is given by the Spirit the word of what? Wisdom. So these are the types of gifts, okay? To another the word of what? Knowledge. By the same what? Spirit. To another what? Faith. By the same what? Spirit. To another the gifts of healing by the what? Same Spirit. Notice this, this key word again, same. Yeah. So these different spiritual gifts, notice there's nothing to do with what people will call a spiritual gift, singing, all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do with all of that. Those are talents, okay? Look at verse 10. To another, the working of what? Miracle. To another, what? Wow. To another, discerning of spirits. 
to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, but all these work is that one and the self same what? Dividing to every man severally as he what? Will. Now, what gift does the body of Christ not have that God gave to the apostles and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? There's one gift that he did not give that is not mentioned for the body of Christ, and there's a reason for it. Casting out demons. Now it says, it, uh, huh? Casting out the demons. Okay. Yeah. Man, I thought I was going to be able to leave with that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I did have my hand up earlier because I wanted to talk about the three sister curriculum going back to the classroom. Uh, In order for me to teach math, I got to be able to teach reading. See, uh -huh. in order to teach social studies, you gotta teach reading. In order to teach science, you gotta teach math and reading. So even though there's different teachers, uh -huh. we all are pretty much teaching the same curriculum. Right, right. That ties in together. I'm, I'm going back up to the different, right, uh, right. Uh, 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 talking about the different operation gifts. Limit, right. So even though the administration kicks out the curriculum, but the curriculum is divided to different subjects. Right. Because this mm -hmm. child go to this class because this guy's good at math, he's going to teach you how to do math. Right. Then if you go to, as that slide, we have the health department. you got to know math, science, you got to know social system, all that because you're going around the 360. So all these different gifts, as it was establishing the body, right. you had different people doing different things. Mm -hmm. But as a student, it was going to benefit with all. Whoa. There you go. So I, every I, student, absolutely. Yeah. Good, perfect yeah. example. Every student, because again, the, at the emphasy of the body of Christ, that they, they couldn't go to church and say, turn to this scripture. So the, the, the words that or the gifts had the function for the purpose of edification for all that heard. Right? That was the purpose. The gift of healing was intended, and the miracles, all of these things, wonders, these gifts of healing, Right? What was the purpose of those gifts? So then they, so, the people could believe. That was who? The Jews. Jew. 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 He went to the Jews first. Mm -hmm. And the Jews they required a, a what? A sign. Yeah. Right? So because Paul was going, God didn't forsake Israel as a people. He just was no longer working through them. Okay? All right? Because there's a different administration going on. Okay? All right? So now. So when it comes to that, so the only gift that the body of Christ didn't have was the casting out of devils. Why? Because it disappeared when Christ arrived. Because the whole purpose of, the, of, of Satan entering people was to, was to destroy the bloodline of Christ. Now that there's no need to do that anymore. So the depth, so people not only do they are they ignorant of spiritual gifts and ignorant of Christ, they're also ignorant of Satan's devices. Because mm -hmm. people are all oh, the devil possession and all. Why would he need to do that if you're spiritually ignorant? Mm -hmm. What would be the point of possessing you? He already got you spiritually ignorant, right? So, so people don't. Even, that's why Paul the the one time he says, "I will not have you ignorant." Six times. The other time, the seventh time, he says, I will not have you ignorant of Satan's devices. Nice. If you don't know how the enemy is trying to attack you, you're going to lose the battle every time. Right? So the spiritual gifts here, as Paul, as Paul points out in 1 Corinthians 12, we'll go to some other verses uh, on Sunday. But he's saying all of these God gives severally as he will for the purpose of edifying and profiting all. Not for the purpose of building one person up better than everybody else. I was just wondering, what's so up? I mean, I guess what is what is going on in the churches when they casting out the demons? And, and the devil is not leaving the church. Right, right, right. I don't right. want to make that correction. I mean, no. devil, yeah, devil. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, look right, who's right. standing in the hole to poop pit when that's happening. Right, right. right. But the thing about it is that <laughs> I mean, that's not real, though. Oh, absolutely not. Uh, so, so, but again, because I, I, I've seen stuff. People sent me stuff where somebody got hit with a chair in the church because they say that's how God was. Casting out the, de the devils. Oh my goodness. Uh, somebody, they made them eat grass. <laughs> one pastor made the congregation eat grass. Oh because they were casting. <laughs> some, one, one, what? Eat grass. I saw something where some pastor told uh, 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 women that they had to, he had to touch them in their private areas. Oh my goodness. In order for the devils to be That's cast out. Really so you got all of this stuff no, when so clearly the good. devil is not even oh operating God. like that anymore. Man. You see that? So not only are they ignorant, and I tell the kid, and I tell kids this when I coach football, and we'll end here. 
you have to know as a defensive player or even off, you have to know your playbook first and then you have to know what they're trying to do to you right that's the whole point right if you don't know your playbook it's not going to benefit you to know what they're trying to do to you you got to know your playbook so when people fall for ignorant stuff like that they number one don't understand the doctrine of the grace of god and for this dispensation number two they don't understand how satan is trying to attack them because if i know satan is not demon possessing why in the world would i go through all of that that's not how he's trying to attack Right? He's trying to keep the gospel and the mystery of Christ hid. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are what? Lost. Mm -hmm. And whom the God of this world has blinded the eyes of them, so that the glorious light of the gospel should not shine unto them. Because spiritual understanding is the purpose anyway. If you can understand, can God's will is that all men be saved and do what? Come into the knowledge of the truth. And there are people ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Right? Yeah. They're ever learning. They're studying, but they're never able to come to the not because they're not rightly dividing the word of truth. Jesus. See that? All right, so we'll get into this on Sunday. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll be I'll be going out of town to Miami this weekend, but I'll be back for Sunday. So uh, I'll be going down Friday, and I'm gonna come coming right back uh, Saturday. So uh, I'll be. Uh, no, nah, I ain't going. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, so I, uh, yeah. So I'll be, I'll be back Sunday though. So we'll do that, and uh, just pray for me, and we'll come back Sunday and we'll pick up everything, okay? Because we're gonna really get into a lot of the other meat of the word. And again, remember now, Roman, uh, First uh, Corinthians twelve, thirteen, and fourteen is all gonna tie in together. So when we get to all these different verses, you'll see what Paul was saying and why he was saying it. Because you now understand the context of 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. All right? All right, so nothing else? Yes. Can I leave with a question? Go ahead. Did the gift of healing disappear with Paul? Because Paul couldn't heal his own son. Right. So, I, I mean, the answer is no, it didn't disappear with Paul. Okay, so Paul is not exclusively tied to that. Because, again, now, the operations has to do with Christ, not Paul. Okay, but I'm just saying. If nothing starts or ends with Paul other than the fact that Christ gave him the doctrine, right? So when you say, does it end with Paul? No. Well, it Paul ends at the time. Himself. Right. Okay. But at the time, okay, it ended with him. But, but that, that's what I'm saying. It didn't end because Paul, Christ ended it because there was a purpose for it. No need. Right. There's no need for it anymore. The right. healing now is done by 10 years of study. Right, 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 right. So, yeah, they study now, right, for the purpose of doing that. Absolutely. Right, because, God, because again, uh, if we're to set our affections on things above, not things on the earth, all right, what part of that don't people get? Because if healing is according to what? Earth. Earthly things. It's earthly Right? So if we're to set our affections, not that God can Okay, it's not a matter of he, if he can, it's a matter of his will. You see, that? that's the difference, all right? All right, nothing else? All right, let us pray. Father God, we thank you now for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love, your kindness, your truth, your understanding. We thank you for who you are. We ask now that you uh, continue to bless us, build us up in our inner man, uh, continue to strengthen us, Father God, continue to uh, uh, give us a heart and a desire to serve you each and every day. Give us a heart uh, to, to study your word, Father God, as that's where we increase our strength and that's where we increase our faith, knowing that, Father God, when we're weak, that's where you're strong and your grace is sufficient. For, the, for you are the all-sufficient Savior. And we thank you for that now. Uh, Father God, we thank you now for uh, uh, just the knowledge of your word, Father God. But we thank you now. Help us not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. But help us to come, Father God, as being ambassadors of Christ, gentle, uh, uh, teaching others, Father God, as we were taught. Uh, Father God, teaching them the, the mystery of Christ so that they may understand your will and know your word and become closer to you. Uh, we pray these things in Jesus' name we do pray. Thank God. Thank Amen. You.